Hey there, my name is Evelyn and I am a pianist and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, my experience being a pianist, uh, all of the things it has taught me, and just about my life as a pianist and what it has done for me because I really and truly do believe that choosing to play the piano has been one of the most important decisions of my life and also one of the most rewarding, and it has really defined who I am. So I would like to share that with you today. I assume most of you have at least seen a piano before. It's one of the most common instruments, uh, even if you don't play it or you don't own one. Um, most everyone is familiar with it. Um, lots of young kids play the piano. Uh, my parents wanted me to start playing, so both my brother and I took piano lessons uh, from a young age, from kindergarten. And we both chose to continue playing because we both enjoy it. And as I got older, it became my decision to continue playing. Even though my parents were the one who started me on the path, I was the one who chose to continue on it. And um, when I was younger, I remember, I think I was like four years old or something, I remember stubbornly saying, I will never play piano. And I think that was just because I didn't want to be like my older brother at the time. But uh, two years later, I began piano lessons and I found myself eating my words because I now think that starting my lessons is one of the most fundamentally changing parts of my life. So um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the structure of the piano. Uh, it has 88 keys from a low A to a high C. Uh, there are 12 unique pitches, so the piano can play, like, we've got, that's a C, that's a C. They're in different octaves, but they sound like the same pitch, just lower or higher, so there are 12 unique pitches that you can play anywhere on the keyboard. Um, and inside the piano, it's sort of like a mix of a percussion and a strings instrument, because inside the piano, there are 88 little hammers, and each of them is hooked up to one of these keys, and when you press a key, that little hammer hits a group of strings, a group of metal coiled strings that will vibrate really, really fast and play this note. They'll vibrate faster up here and slower down here, because lower sounds vibrate slower, higher sounds vibrate faster, but I digress. The piano also has three pedals that are used to make changes to the sound. The most common one, the one that almost everyone knows about, is the damper pedal, which sustains a note after you play it. So the damper pedal is used in all kinds of things. If you want to play something really, like, very light and sweet, that kind of thing. Um, we also have the soft pedal, which is on the left which will make your sounds a little more muted, a little softer. You can really hear the difference. Now, the last pedal, uh, this piano is actually a little different. On most pianos, what the last pedal does, it's called a sostenuto pedal. And that's just a fancy word for if you play a note and then press down on that sostenuto pedal, it will sustain that note for you. So it's like a damper pedal, but with like you choose what notes it wants to sustain. So you play the note, then press the pedal, and then while you're playing other notes, it'll keep sustaining that one for you, but the other notes won't be sustained. So it's sort of a fancy trick that we use to play more notes than our fingers can really handle, which several composers seem to like having us do. Uh, there are many pieces written for people with hands bigger than mine. Like, I, I, I can't reach what is called a tenth from this C down to this A, and a lot of composers want me to, so I have to get creative sometimes. But on my piano, it's not a sostenuto pedal, it's, I don't know what it's called, it's like a mute pedal. It's basically a pedal for when I want to practice at one in the morning and everyone else is asleep. It makes the sounds really muted and quiet. So if you live in a house full of people and you don't want to bother any of them, that's a good pedal. Um, so yeah, that's really about all there is to the piano structure. So, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my personal history at the piano. Like I said, I, uh, started in kindergarten. I've been playing for almost 15 years now. I'm in college and I also take lessons from a professor at college. I've taken lessons from three different people. I started 
with a nice gentleman that my parents started me with. And then I changed to a different teacher around the end of elementary school. And then I stayed with her all the way through college. But when I moved away, I had to get a new teacher. So I found a professor at my school who teaches me for an hour a week during the school year. And she is so sweet. She's taught me so much about expressing myself and being musical. And something else that my teachers and my parents have taught me about piano is how to use uh, good organizational skills while playing. So uh, I have a lot of music and a lot of books because the, the collection starts to just mount up when, before you even realize that you have books everywhere of all different kinds of music. You probably have like three copies of the same piece in three different books. But uh, more of the organization that I'm talking about is like time management. Because when I was in kindergarten and like in first and second and third grade, I had to practice 30 minutes of piano a day. That was the rule. But that helped me get into the mindset of really practicing piano every single day. Because with piano, with any instrument really, you've gotta keep up constant practice. Like if you really need to work at it because you're gonna forget how to do things really, really fast. I actually, I had a couple of weeks in May um, during my final exams where I didn't really practice much piano at all. And then like two or three weeks later, I started playing again and it felt so rusty. My hands felt like the muscles weren't as flexible as they usually are, and I've been having to work up since then to get back to what I'm used to playing. So the mindset of really practicing every day, making time for it, is super important, and it's something I still struggle with sometimes. I mean, I think all of us have some issues with time management sometimes, especially during the current situation with coronavirus and all of that. But as I grew older, the responsibility of finding time to practice became more and more mine and less and less my parents to enforce on me, especially as it became my decision to play piano rather than something they wanted me to do. So in college, when I don't have a piano in my dorm, I have to make time to walk over to the music building, go to the basement, um, pray that someone has left a practice room open, and if not, I find um, the music library upstairs and wait until someone is ready. So I have to really make time out of my day amidst all of hanging out with friends, doing homework. So practicing piano has really helped me with that a lot. Another thing that playing piano has really helped me with is the idea of setting goals and working towards them to help you achieve a bigger goal. Um, now, if you've heard any of those big, big piano pieces uh, written by all these famous composers who've probably been dead for like 200 years, um, they're enormous and it seems so overwhelmingly daunting to look at one of these pieces and you probably just immediately think I can't do that and sometimes I do look at pieces and I think I can't do that but then I look at the piece more closely and I realize yes I can I just need to do it slowly and in small little bits I'm currently learning a really famous sonata by Beethoven who some of you have probably heard of and um, <clears throat> This is a really famous sonata. It's also known for being famously difficult. You have all these arpeggios. They go everywhere and it's so technical. So it seemed really daunting when I first started, but so what I did was I took the piece apart and I learned little sections a bit at a time. And you really learn patience with this thing because you have to start really slowly sure you have all your fingers in the right place to make sure you have all your notes and the way you're articulating them and then you slowly work it up to a higher tempo and this is just the first three measures of the piece so you've got to be really really patient because if you're not then you're gonna get really frustrated and you're just probably you might give up because it's just it's not rewarding you don't feel any sense of reward about what you're doing it just seems so impossible and well, I'm using this example of a piano piece because that's what I know, but this works with any other thing. If you're designing anything that's big, you have to do it in small chunks. You can't just create something out of nothing and expect it to be enormous. You have to start small. And if you're learning how to, like, let's say you're painting a masterpiece. It's the same thing. Um, you want to start and you want to think small and then work your way out. And I think that's something that playing piano has really taught me. That was a lesson I didn't learn for a long time, is focus on the details. When I was in middle school, there was a piece that I just couldn't quite perfect. Like I knew the notes 
but I kept not practicing the little tiny bits that I was getting wrong and I kept just plowing through the piece over and over and over again. So I learned mistakes and that was a hard lesson to learn that that's not the way to do things and that I actually hurt my own process of learning the piece, but it also taught me how to really do it properly and I've become a much better pianist for it. But that's another thing. It also helped me realize that screwing up over and over and over can eventually help you get it right. I cannot count the number of times when I would run through a passage, get so frustrated and do the, repeat that like 12 times before finally, finally getting it right and figuring out what I was doing wrong the first 12 times. And while some of these lessons that playing the piano has taught me are applicable in other things that are not related to the piano, they're also very applicable in my job. I actually work as a pianist. I am an accompanist, which means that if you've ever heard a choir uh, singing, a group of people singing or a soloist singing, and there's a piano player behind them backing them up and providing the track that they sing to, that's what I do. And I play for people's uh, voice lessons. I play for uh, choir performances. I currently work with a middle school, or I did before the coronavirus happened. And I just play behind them and I help them rehearse and help them to sound the best they can be. And I think it's a really re rewarding job and I love doing it. So it, it's just a win-win because I get to, I get paid to do what I love to do. So, um, Something else I love to do is composing. I am an aspiring composer. I've written a few things. Um, I've only written one thing for the piano so far, but I really love it. I wrote it a couple of months ago. It's of a genre called ragtime. So if any of you have ever heard of a guy called Scott Joplin, he's sort of considered the first real ragtime guy. He, it, ragtime has this really funky style. It's hard to describe. It's kind of, it sounds almost like a march but it's syncopated, which means that the beats aren't quite where you expect them to be. You expect them to be like, da, 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 da. But no, the beats are all over the place, and that's what makes a rag interesting. So to close out, I'm going to play for you Shortcake Rag, which is a piece that I composed, um, I believe, at the end of April. And I hope you enjoy it, and thank you for having me.
much and I hope you have a wonderful day.